Did you know that some treated lumber rots much faster than other types of treated lumber? Most people tend to lump all treated lumber into one big category, and they assume that they can use it all interchangeably. But that's wrong. Yes, there are some types of treated lumber that you can basically submerge in a lake. But there are other types that you can't even let touch the ground. It's really important that you know the differences between them. So that's what I'm talking about today on The Honest Carpenter Show. For about the last 14 years, treated lumber has fallen into two broad categories. Ground contact versus non-ground contact or above ground use. On the surface, the distinction is simple. Ground contact lumbers are able to sit on or in the ground without rotting quickly. Whereas some above ground lumbers really shouldn't sit within six inches of the ground or open water. But why are there different grades of treated lumber like this? Essentially, what it comes down to is that we've changed the way that we pressure treat our lumber over the years. Our PT lumber used to contain a trace amount of arsenic suspended in a fluid called chromated copper arsenate. When we pressure treated all lumber with this fluid, it helped that lumber last a really long time. But the presence of arsenic in the wood caused a lot of concern and the EPA had companies phase it out in around 2009. I did a whole video on the actual toxicity of treated lumber, so check that one out if you're interested. But long story short, we switched over to using two other solutions for most residential treated lumber. That's alkaline copper quaternary and micronized copper azole. But these fluids don't protect our lumber quite as well, and they also contain a lot of copper, which makes them very expensive. So rather than having a ton of pricey wood, lumber companies started grading out wood based on their treatment retention essentially how much treatment chemical they retain after they dry out. This chemical retention is graded on a scale that starts at 1A and tops out at 5C. And each grade has a certain ideal usage associated with it. So when you're planning projects for outdoor structures, you need to be sure you're using a wood grade that will stand up to its purpose. The scales are actually fairly complicated and I'll link a few websites below that explain it really well. But for rule of thumb, here's a quick primer. For things like sill plates, which are inside the house but resting on lightly damp masonry, a use category of just two will suffice. They're primarily going to remain dry. For exterior parts of the house that are going to remain mostly covered, like a porch floor, a category of at least 3A is sufficient. This is also the case for things outdoors that stand vertically and don't touch the ground much, like fence pickets. However, for things that will be outside and off the ground but lying flat, things like deck boards and porch railings, a category rating of 3B or higher is suggested. Because these boards lie flat, they dry off much more slowly and therefore need better chemical retention to prevent rot. Those are the last of the above ground ratings. From there, we move into the ground contact lumbers. These start at 4A, what's called general usage, and they include fence posts, deck posts, various things that will have their bottom end resting in or on the ground. The ground frequently has a high moisture saturation level, and this means that lumber has to be of a category that can resist that constant moisture. Also, many of these components will be hard to replace because they're structural, so code will often suggest using treated lumber with a 4B heavy duty rating or higher. This way the components will just last longer and you won't have to tear the structure apart to replace them. From there you get into marine use lumber, which is 5A or higher. This is specifically lumber used for docks and pilings and submerged retention walls. Basically anything that sits around or in water should be 5A or higher. And structures in salt water are at the highest end with a 5B or 5C rating because salt water is really corrosive. Now, that's a lot of information in a short time and it can be hard to remember. But fortunately, lumber manufacturers simplify this by stating on the lumber tag or sticker whether it's for above ground use or it's ground contact rated. This is really helpful in a general way. And if you're not sure what you need, remember that you can always talk to an ordering expert in a specialty lumber yard. For instance, if you're in an extremely wet or tropical environment, or if your lumber is gonna be subjected to salt splash from local salt water, talk to your local lumber supplier. Explain your situation to them and they'll most likely guide you right to the product that you need. Also, I've heard that some larger distributors like Home Depot and 84 Lumber are actually looking to phase out non-ground contact treated lumber. They feel that it's too confusing to have both types and it raises too many warranty concerns. But for now, a lot of this lumber is still out there and seems like it will be for a while. So I hope that this explanation is helpful and that it clears up some confusion on the matter. Let me know what you thought of the video down in the comments and I'll try to get down there and answer questions as well. 
As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back soon for more videos coming up and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.